Hello, welcome again. Today I will be talking about binarism, another important concept within the context of postcolonial studies. But before I talk about it within the context of postcolonial studies, we need to understand uh, where the term comes from. And the term comes from Sashorian linguistics. Sashore was one of the first linguists who decided to study language differently. And his difference from earlier studies of languages was that he studied the language as a system present at a certain time, which is called the synchronic study of linguistics or languages. And within that, he argued for certain postulates that we must agree to while studying the language. And the first most significant thing in his linguistics was that the sign, as we understand it, has two sides to it, the signifier and the signified. The signifier is the acoustic sound that we make or what we scrawl on a piece of paper. That part of the sign is called the signifier. And the concept that comes into our mind as we make an acoustic sound like book or bat, that concept is the signifier. And these are two sides of the sign. They are not split according to Saturian linguistics, but two sides of a sign. And sometimes they refer to an actual referent in the world. Like when I say tree, T-R-E-E, -E, tree, tree part of it is the signifier. The concept that comes into my mind when I say tree is the signified and the actual tree in the world is the referent. But most of the times the referent falls by the wayside in Saussurian linguistics. <clears throat> so by suggesting that a sign has two sides to it, signifiers and signified, he moves on to say that the relationship between the signifier and the signified is not natural. By that, what he means is that when I say tree and that idea of a thing with leaves and a stem comes in my mind, there is no natural connection between what I uttered and the concept. That concept that emerges in my mind is totally arbitrary in the sign system. But within a given living linguistic community, conventionally, when that signification is accepted, then it becomes fixed. So in the English language, when I say tree, in literal sense, all of us would agree that it means what it means because we have conventionally, as a society of that language speakers, agreed to it. But the relationship between the signifier and the signified is completely arbitrary. There is no natural connection. That's the point that he's making. The second most important thing in Saussurean linguistics that he mentions is that science means something in difference from other signs, okay? That the sign has no substantial meaning of itself. It means something because it is not something else, right? So that is what we call the differential meaning. And these two terms, the substantial meaning of the sign and the differential meaning of the sign play a huge role as we move into deconstruction and other aspects of literary theory. So signs mean something in difference from other signs. A chair is a chair because it's not a table. A table is a table because it is not the floor. So it's that difference from other signs that constitutes the meaning of a sign for me. And that is where the binaries come in, right? So the binary structure of the sign then is that the sign works through this binary structure. It means something because of another sign, but then there are extreme forms of binaries too, where one sign is absolutely opposite to another sign. So the example would be white, black, right? Day, night, civilized, uncivilized, right? Uh, uh, organized, unorganized, civilized, savage. These are some of the binary structures, the extreme binaries. And in colonialism then, Binarism is when the colonizers define the colonized world through these binary structures of the language, right? Where the civilized 
is associated with the Europeans, primitive is associated with the native cultures, right? Um, white is considered civilized, black or other connotations of color are considered uncivilized privilege. Europe is considered civilized. Asia is considered uncivilized or privileged. And it's that binary structure which then structures the colonizers view of the natives, but also then structures the policies that are built around it. And in all other circumstances, even if they are not colonial, the science system, these binaries get to define who is privileged and who is not because one part of the binary is always privileged over the other. So if you look at the man woman binary, historically, we know that the man part of the binary has always been privileged. If you look at Europe, Africa binary, Europe is always privileged and that privilege is socially, politically, culturally produced and stabilized and made to look normal. So in post-colonial studies, then binarism is a concept which in practice then defines the real realities of experience for the colonized and the world and the way of viewing the natives by the colonized. And that is why the fight in the colonies has was always about disrupting the binaries by proving that natives were not necessarily savages, that they were cultured in their own way, by proving that, oh, they are not people without history, they have a history. So binarism by its very nature divides the world through a sign system into one sign that is one part of the binary that is privileged and the other part of the binary that is not. And that is the structure that defines most of the dictates and systems of colonialism because the Europeans who colonize have to assume that they are more civilized, that they are more enlightened. And then on the other end of the binary structure, the natives who are primitive, who are uncivilized who are savages right and it's that binary structure that holds the system together at any time an anti-colonial movement rises part of what it's trying to do even in practical politics is to disrupt that binary to destroy that binary and either prove that they are superior to you know, the other side of the binary, or at least that they are not necessarily what they are believed to be within the science structure. So binarism overall was a system, linguistic, and then eventually political, that divided the reality through language into the privileged side of the binary that belonged to the Europeans and the non-privileged side of the binary, which was attributed to the natives. And the fight then ultimately was to disrupt the binary. Right, and we can trace this in feminism, where women have fought against the male dominant binary structures in um, race and ethnic divides, where those who are racially considered inferior have successfully most of the times fought to be included and to disrupt the binary structure. So whenever someone uses the term disrupting the binary structure or disrupting binarism, what they basically mean is the disruption of the science system and its attendant ramifications in the political and cultural realm in which the privileged side of the binary is, is complicated, is disrupted, is rewritten. So these are some of my thoughts on binarism in post-colonial studies. Now, as usual, if you have any questions, you can always post them in the comment section. And if you would like me to cover any other concepts in post-colonial studies, please do comment and let me know. And if you like what I'm doing here, please do um, sub subscribe and so that you can get uh, timely uh, notifications about what's coming up next. Thank you so much for joining me and see you next time. Bye.